In this lecture, we'll take a look at how we can control the browser's scroll behavior. By scroll behavior, I'm referring to how the browser scrolls when we navigate from one page to another. We added a hash fragment to the product links in the previous lecture, so let's begin by making the browser scroll down to the element matching the ID from the hash fragment. The way we define the scroll behavior is by adding a function when creating the router instance within the main.js file. By leveraging ea 6 functions, we can simply add it as follows. So let's add a scroll behavior function and it takes three arguments to, from and saved position and I'll get back to these in just a moment. If you prefer, you can also use a normal function for the scroll behavior key. This function can be used to determine how the browser should scroll when changing from one route to another. If we want the browser to scroll, then we should return an object specifying where it should scroll to, which I'll get back to in just a moment. So notice the three parameters that I added to the function. The first two are the to and from routes where the third parameter specifies the previous scroll position if the user used the back or forward button in the browser. So if we want the browser to scroll on the page, then we should return an object with one of two structures, with the first one being an object with a selector property containing the selector for an element. The other option is an object containing an X and Y property, specifying where the browser should scroll to on the x-axis and y-axis, respectively. We'll be using both of these options, but first, we'll be using the one with the selector. That's because we want to scroll to the element matching the hash fragment. First, let's check if we're navigating to a URL containing a hash fragment in the first place, which we can do by using the to argument. Since this is a route object, we can access the hash property on this object. So let's just check if we have a positive value within this hash property and that it's not empty. If this is the case, then all we need to do is to return an object with the hash for the selector property. So return an object and add the selector property to dot hash. Since the hash property on the to parameter already includes a hashtag, then we can just pass it. So this is a valid selector for an element with an ID. Lastly, I will just return false at the bottom of the function as a fallback. So return false here. And this means don't scroll. Technically, this is not necessary because it's implicit if we don't return anything as view will then evaluate undefined, which is a false value. I just personally like to keep it explicit, but that's totally up to you. Let's take it for a sprint and see if it works. So let's just click some product link. As you can see, the browser now scrolls down when we navigate to the page because of the hash fragment. That's exactly what we're looking for, so that's awesome. Now there is something else I want to take care of. If I click to navigate to a related product, notice how the scroll position remains the same. Honestly, that doesn't look so great and we probably want to scroll to the top of the page when doing so. So let's do that. Instead of returning false at the bottom of the function, we can return an object specifying that we want the browser to scroll to the top and also all the way to the left, although it's not so common to scroll horizontally. So let's change this part to return an object with an x key or property of zero and the same for the y key. So these are the coordinates that the browser should scroll to. Before testing it out, I just want to handle the scenario where the saved position is a truthy value indicating that the user has either clicked the back or forward button in their browser. In that case, we can just return the parameter to navigate to the appropriate position as it contains an object. So let's do that before the last return statement. So if saved position is positive, then we'll just return it. The last statements could of course be turned into a shorthand if statement to keep it short, but I think this looks good and readable. 
All right, so let's head back to the browser and see what that does for us. So I'll just go back to the products and click one and click a related product. Now we can see that the browser scrolls to the top when we navigate to a different route in cases where the other conditions are not met. And if I click my browser's back button, notice how the browser scrolls back to the scroll position that it had on the previous page. That's pretty cool, right? The scroll behavior function that we just implemented is what you will typically use, and it's an excellent starting point. If you need some specific behavior, then you can certainly adjust it to your needs. It is, after all, just a JavaScript function, so you can do pretty much anything you want in there. As a last thing, I just want to mention that controlling the scroll behavior is only available when using the HTML5 history mode for the router and therefore not the hash mode. The history mode is what most people will be using anyways, so it's probably not a problem for you.